How's it going guys? I'm Dip. Welcome back to Dip Discovery. Today we're actually doing a cool review of the Mustang Mach-E from our mate's car that he just bought. So let's get to it. All right, so here's the Ford Mustang Mach-E. So it's a bit of a controversial car because it's called the Mustang and it's an electric vehicle. So a lot of people have kicked off about that. But let's get to it. The styling is from the Mustang, inspired by that anyway. So that's the kind of idea of it. It comes with three different um, models at the moment. So we've got the RWD, the AWD, and the GT version. The RWD comes in at 273 mile range, starts around 42K on the road. Uh, then you've got the AWD, which is this one, which is the all wheel drive version, starts around 50K on the road. And it also has about uh, 200 and what is it uh, 80 kind of mile range but you can get the extended battery pack which this one has got which is advertised at about 330 uh, mile range then you've got the top of the range GT model um, which uh, has got about 330 mile range standard um, but you also get a bit more uh, um, kit in there as well the AWD model what we've got here today comes with the extra 19 inch wheels you've got the active park assist and the bang and awesome sound system as well so these are little perks you get over the standard RWD version so let's have a look at the exterior all right, so here we have the Mustang Mark E, and it's in this what they call infinite blue color. All right, so it's quite a nice kind of uh, deep kind of almost like a pastel blue, but it's got a gloss finish to it. But it looks really nice in the sun. Obviously, right now it's beaming right now, so the sun's hitting it quite well. Front end of the car, as you can see, obviously because it's an electric vehicle, we haven't got any grill or anything like that. But we have got it last covered up with the Mustang Pony logo. You know, if you if you like that, if you don't want to say it's a Ford. <laughs> but then you've also got the uh, front camera, so it has got that active park assist, so you can see around the whole car as well when you're using your reverse cameras and your front forward cameras as well. Um, we've got some uh, just uh, kind of blanked out vents here, and of course we've got the nice uh, Mustang kind of style esque um, headlights. This is what they look like when they're off. And then there's, my mate's just going to turn them on right now and you can see what it looks like when it's on. And it's got the full LED beam there with the uh, Tiger Claw kind of uh, three lines. That's very Mustang-like. Anyway, so let's jump around the side. So the side profile for the car, because it's like one of these like coupe SUV, it does kind of sit a bit higher up as well. Um, and you get this nice kind of double tone uh, roof line as well. So the roof actually goes up to here, but because of this sloping roof here, with the coupe shape kind of gives it a bit more of a nicer coupe look stance to it and it does look kind of muscular with these large kind of haunches over the uh, kind of black gloss uh, wheel arches as well to get in the car you've got no handles you've just got this little uh, button here and then when it's unlocked you can go up to it press it and then the door opens itself out and you can grab onto that and open it or just grab it from the side there and then close it as well on the driver's side version you've got a uh, pin uh, code here which uh, you can see now in the b-roll um, and that you can use that to actually unlock the car and get in when you don't have the keys on you which is pretty cool as well so here we've got the 19 inch wheels um, obviously these ones are aftermarket ones but you know as standard they do come with black and silver diamond cut alloy wheels uh, 19 inch um, with Michelin Pilot Sport tyres um, on the standard version which kind of look the same you know with the black and silver two-tone look this is your charging port there you go so that opens up there and then you can um, obviously plug into your charging port which we'll do a little test of later to see how it all works but um, uh, that's kind of lockable as well when the car's like locked um, with the central locking it locks the door as well so let's have a look at the back side so here we've got the back of the car and it has got that kind of mustang uh, vibe to it with the uh, three kind of lights that slash down like that so when they're off they look like this and then when they're on you know obviously you get that nice uh, red led glow you know coming in through the slashes and um, just do the indicators as well see what they look like and then uh like your hazards or something like that there you go and that's what it kind of looks like there when they kind of do that step motion as they uh, light up as well so you got the uh, mustang uh, logo as well there and you've got a uh, camera a review camera as well and to actually open it, there's this little small little button here and you just got to press it once and then the thing lifts up by itself pretty cool stuff there's also a switch there as well when you push it it'll close down by itself as well and then inside the boot we've got um the uh, a false floor which you can uh, lower as well we can put it higher or lower and then you've also got all the cable storage if you want to put in the uh, cables uh, uh, be beneath the floor but to be honest there's only a little small bit of space you're gonna have to kind of tie it up quite tight it's gonna be a bit time consuming so my friend just chucks him in the back, back of the boot here like this um, but obviously that is something to bear in mind all right now to put the actual boot lid down you can either press this button there or you can actually put it down 
inside using the uh, infotainment screen there. So I'll just press the button then obviously you can see it automatically puts it in and then you can take your shopping and go back home. Oh, now getting into the Mustang market, you just sit a bit higher than your average kind of car. Um, what you just heard there was that annoying two horns and what that does every time you get out the car with the keys, then it'll make the two horn beep. I haven't checked if you can actually uh, stop that, but it is quite annoying. But anyway, once you get into the car, it is uh, a bit more upmarket than your normal kind of Ford. So this is a bit more uh, reminiscent of something like a uh, one of the uh, Vignale ranges um, or the previous Titanium X ranges, where they've got a lot more better quality of the interior. So you've got um, you know nice um, uh, uh, like leather feeling, like um, uh, furnishing. Um, you know, we've got the nice contrast red stitching, the seats are a bit nicer as well like they are on the Vignale models and you also get a nice chunky steering wheel um, which has got the Mustang logo moniker on there as well. At the centre of the uh, uh, cockpit you've got the uh, huge uh, infotainment screen um, which is what a lot of the uh, electric uh, cars are doing these days. It is very bright as well, it's got a gloss finish. Um, sometimes you know when the sun um, glares on it, uh, it can get a bit jarring but um, it's not something that I've noticed too much and this one's actually got a panoramic uh, roof as well um, so I've not really seen that as an issue because it is slightly tinted but this panoramic roof definitely makes the uh, interior feel a lot more airy a lot more bright as well and it makes this the space look a bit bigger underneath the uh, center console here um, we've got a nice little gap as well for storage which is really cool so you can put some like uh, cables or you know packet crisp or whatever you want to do and there's also room to hold your uh, Ford Mustang uh, Eau de Toilette uh, perfume as well. So if you incline that way, you've got a wireless charging pad as well, and you've also got a USB and a micro USB type C charging cable port there as well. Two cup holders. Um, obviously hasn't got any uh, manual gear knob because electric car, but you have got the automatic gear selector, which does you your reverse neutral and drive as well as park in there as well. Here, you've got the uh, armrest, which uh, lifts up and you've got a sliding tray which you can fit, you know, your mobile, whatever else you want to do, some packet of polos, anything you want there. Um, now, this being the AWD version, comes with the Bang & Olufsen sound system as well, um, which comes with a really cool sound bar up here as well. And you've got this huge Bang & Olufsen speakers in the doors as well. Um, and it sounds really, really good. Um, down here, you've got a glove box, which is a decent size, you know, nothing spectacular, but enough to keep your bottle of hand sanitizer, all that kind of jazz. And obviously you've got your power start, stop, um, in the front there and there's a nice little screen here for your cockpit which kind of tells you your range, your miles per hour, all that kind of jazz. So let's have a look at the back seats. So as we move over to the back seats of the Mustang Mark 8, you know, it work itself as a pretty good family car because there's actually quite a bit of space back here. You have, because obviously it's an electric car, you've got a flat uh, floor, bottom floor as well, so there's no transmission tunnel to worry about. You've also got a uh, USB and a USB Type-C charging cable there, um, and you've also got your two um, heated air vents as well. Full leather as well in the back, and you've still got the Bang & Olufsen sound system speakers in the, in the doors as well, with the tweeters above there as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, loads of uh, knee room as well. This is in my friend's driving position. Um, he's about five foot seven, um, and there's still you know loads of room for your, for your knees. And you know uh, as well for the the headroom isn't too bad either, unless you're like over six foot, it might get a bit tight in here. But um, you know the panoramic roof definitely does help uh, give that sense of um, uh, you know uh, airy and space in there as well, which is really good, and it adds also a bit of extra. Um, uh, height to the uh, the roof because it's um, you know it's a bit higher up because it's a lot slimmer. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now is take this bad boy for a drive. Um, we're also going to have a look at the infotainment system as well. So here's pretty the infotainment screen. It's a really nice crystal clear display. Um, it's quite responsive as well. You know, operating to your uh, fingers pretty much how you do with you know um, uh, a phone or something like that. But it's really sharp graphics. Um, so at the moment we've got it loaded with uh, Android Auto, which is synced sync to Raj's phone here. Uh, but I'll show you the quick uh, overview of the uh, Ford uh, um, uh, operating system. So obviously you've got your standard stuff like your, uh, your phone, the built-in Ford navigation there as well. So when you use that, it takes up more of the screen. And um, you also have these shortcut buttons here as well, which kind of takes you to your radio, your Apple CarPlay if you've got that. You've got the Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. Those are like quick kind of selections while you're still in that menu. Um, this bottom area always stays the same. So this is your climate control. Obviously it's dual zone. You've also got your heat seats. You just push that and you can select what, um, you know, how hot you kind of want it. 
so it's quite cold at the moment so we've put it on max you've also got heated uh, steering wheel controls and you've got a nice little dial here which changes the volume so it's a tactile feeling button personally i would have preferred if these these because they're always there if there was some form of buttons instead because they're always there anyway um that would have been better for me because i think a, a muscle memory would kick in but if you always want to go back to the home screen just touch the mustang logo there at the top and it takes you back there as well um, if you were to open up the uh, Android Auto, then how it works is it takes over the top part of the screen like uh, the, the, where the Ford one was and you can kind of go through there through the normal Android Auto settings and you've got your apps there like your Spotify, you know, you've got its own navigation apps and FM radio and all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, I mean, how, how have you found using Raj uh, the, uh, the Android Auto with the Ford, like is it a bit weird having both operating systems working at the same time? Yeah, I mean there is a bit of a difference when you're using the Ford navigation compared to uh, Google Maps. I, I personally prefer Google Maps because it syncs up to all my older destinations and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you can, I mean there's different sort of apps, I mean obviously they're thinking when, when you're sat in the car driving what, what can you do while you're waiting for it. Um, I mean you've got games and, and this sort of stuff. Um, It'd be cool if there was a camera on it and you could do your, your video calls and your Teams calls and all that sort of stuff. All right, a camera built into the top there. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can go <laughs> do some Skype calls while you're actually yeah. in the thing. Yeah, no, that would be a good shout. There's, um, what's the, uh, if you wanted to do the radio through Android Auto, how does it work? Let's say if I wanted to listen to radio right now. Uh, well, you just go back to your main menu and then you've got all your, your DAB and then it's got all my sort of stations uh, saved to it. So it's like running two kind of uh, the Ford one. It goes back to the Ford yeah, uh, version. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously you've got your AM, FM, DAB, um, and you can just scroll through different stations there. Yeah. Right. Okay then. And then, if you wanted to do it through Android Auto, I think there is a radio app, Absolute Radio, there, and you can download other ones from your phone and sync it up. Um, yeah. What else have you got? Yeah, you can play videos through it as well, um, which is kind of cool when you parked up. Yeah, it keeps the kids busy if you're stuck in traffic or something, I suppose, yeah, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's have a look here. Let's have a look in the uh, the settings. Where do you go there? Um, you know, for uh, the uh, driver modes and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's on your driver menu, mode menu here. So you've got your active, which is sort of your day-to-day -day standard uh, driving mode. Your whisper mode, which is your equivalent of eco mode. Yeah. Um, so when, I'm, when my battery is running low like now, I'll always switch to that. Yeah. And then... The one that I really like driving in is what they call untamed mode, which is your equivalent of your, your sport mode. Um, obviously, that's, that uses your battery a lot faster. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a better driving experience. Okay. And then does the you got this propulsion sound as well there. So I'm guessing the sound changes depending on which mode you're in? Yeah. So, if, I mean, on active mode, we can't see it now, but the ambient light changes to blue. Okay. Um, and then you, the, your propulsion sound is sort of uh, adapted to that, that driving mode. Your untamed one, that's the one you can really hear the propulsion sound and it's, it's it's quite quite a cool sound. I mean, we'll, we'll, when we take it for a drive, you'll, you'll experience it. Yeah, and then you've got this one pedal drive, so that means you uh, don't have to use the brake and it brakes for you and recharge the batteries, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it takes a bit of getting used to it. it basically, like you said, it takes the bra brakes off and um, it'll slow you down a lot faster. Yeah, that's cool. All right, and so look at these cameras over here. So this is the 360 camera that we've got here. So as you can see, the front one here is projecting my uh, garage, which is in front of the car. But it gives you this really cool like 360 view here. It's almost like a top down view, like there's a drone flying above your uh, car. And you can see the fence to our right here, the walls and all the, uh, you know, everything around the car. So it's quite handy to have, especially when you're trying to do parking as well. Um, so that's really swish. Um, what else have we got here? Um, so this, this is the active park assist. So this car can actually park itself as well so if you're in like a parking and you're trying to get into a tricky spot then the car will actually park for you as well um, but it's up to you how, how much you'd kind of trust it and uh, there's also a valet mode as well so basically this kind of deactivates the screen from working and stuff like that so while they're cleaning the screen you know they can't activate and t change any of your your settings and all that kind of jazz so that's pretty much it with the infotainment system so what we're going to do is take it for a quick drive now and see how the thing uh, sounds like all right guys so we're actually on the road now and we're trying to find a fast charger to get some extra juice in the car so we can see uh, how fast it can kind of uh, charge uh, what we're look, look, ideally if we can find 150 kilo on that'd be great um, 
but you know there's other fast chargers like 50 kilowatt um what was it at home? It's 20. 22. I don't think we'll find a 150 kilowatt around here, mate. We're in Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll see what we can get. So this is the reality of trying to charge your car with a, an EV in this day and age. This is a Sunday, and the problem is we've only got an, about an hour we can spare. These are all the slow chargers, which, you know, there's, there's space for them, but they take like hours. And then this is the fast one, and they're both being taken up and this is the second place we've been to and this is the problem we've got so you know and we don't know how long these guys are going to be and we've only got about 25 miles left so we either wait or we risk finding another car park we're charging so he, look at him he's screwed <laughs> so this is the third place we're at and this guy is plugged in and so is that car as well? No, oh, wait, that one's free. Oh, you can only charge one at a time. That's the slow one. And this is a slow charger, it's not even a fast charger. So, this is the problem you got. This infrastructure's not ready yet. So, guys, we're here at the uh, Texaco on Chorley New Road. We're going to test out this uh, Instavolt fast charger and see how fast it actually charges. So, tap contactless. That's just authorizing now. Right, let's get this plugged in. So it's the CCS charger. So we lift the flap, put it in. Yeah, there's wires all around me. Yep, and it's started now. So hopefully it won't take too long. So it's currently showing we're fast charging. Uh, we'll get to 80% by 3.18 and the time currently is one uh, two eighteen, so about an hour, um, which is not the, that great. But this is only a fifty kilowatt charger, and um, so it will be a lot faster if you can find a hundred and fifty kilowatt chargers. This one's still considered a fast charger, though, isn't it? But it's not like yeah, it's the uh, it's the fifty kilowatt. So the home ones are twenty two kilowatt uh, max. Right. So it's still fast, but it's not it's not the fastest. Yeah. So it does have an option to uh, schedule your charging for when you're at home, and it's got all your uh, history of, of your charging points and so on and I think they do recommend to charge it to, to 80% and uh, because it, it's better for the battery and it, I think it slows down once it gets past 80% right so we finally managed to get some juice in the thing um, so yeah we're just going to talk about how it drives um, so what would you say this is like then compared to like after you drove in like performance cars before you know like the Nissan GTR and you know your last S4 as well. Yeah. Uh, well, how would you say the electric? Uh, it's a very, it's a very smooth drive. I mean, I don't know if you can hear it there, but it's got this artificial sound. Um, obviously, it's nothing like a like a, like a sort of petrol car, um, but it does give off this this artificial sound, which makes it sort of separate from the other electric cars that you can get, which are completely silent. Yeah. Um, we're currently in untamed mode, which is their sort of sports version. Um, as you can see, you can change it to whisper mode which is sort of like your old granny mode, um, eco mode. Um, I never drive it in that because it's just boring. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your active mode, which is sort of for your, your city driving, I guess, and I guess your countryside driving like we are now. Um, and that just gives it a bit more sort of acceleration and so on. Yeah, no, it is a lot more quiet. Would you, would you say you miss the sound of the engine or do you think it's, you prefer it without? Or, you know, how, how do you find in that? I prefer it without personally. Um, I mean, where I live as well, I couldn't get away with driving a sort of V6 or V8 around there. I'll have all the neighbours complaining. Yeah. Um, so I, I prefer this. I mean, I, I think the electric sounds quite cool. Um, it's quite, you know, I've got to give that like, sort of futuristic sound to it. Yeah. And how have you been finding, like, have you been getting any range anxiety or anything like that? Because of obviously, you know, the batteries only last so long. No, you do have to plan ahead. Um, I mean, if you're doing a long distance trip, you do want to plan where you're going to stop, how how um, how many miles you're doing, and so on. Yeah. Um, I've never come close to it. Fingers crossed, it won't happen to me. But um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it has happened to a few people. What's the furthest um, like trip you've done with it so far? Um, so I went to to Birmingham last week. Um, that was what 100 and odd miles, um, and that got me there in one full charge. Found a fast charger there, so it was not too bad. One hour re re recharged and yeah. back on the road. 
And uh, could you find like charger, enough empty chargers along the way in that? Yeah, I mean, where we live in Bolton, it's quite, it's quite hard to find them. I think there's only around two or three in my area. Um, and, the, and one of them's a slow charger as well. Um, the supermarkets have started installing them, so if you do go Tesco or Asda, um, you can, you know, get a quick sort of mini reload while you're, while you're doing your shopping. It is a bit eerie, because when you're, uh, you're driving, obviously, because there's no engine sound, like when you stop, there's, uh, you don't you don't hear any like engine cut off or anything like yeah, that, you yeah. know. So uh, that is something to kind of get used to, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you, you do have your propulsion sound button there. So if you don't if you don't like the noise and you want to save a little bit of battery, then you can turn that off. Yeah. So can the propulsion no uh, propulsion sound be heard on the uh, outside? Of yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So people are aware of you approaching, kind of thing. Yeah. All right, so have you had any experience using the uh, the one pedal brake in uh, the one pedal drive? Have you found that? I don't like it personally because it breaks as soon as you lift your foot off. It just starts breaking really quite aggressively. Um, so I prefer it without it. Um, I mean, it's, it's sort of like similar to your whisper mode because it does it, it gives you that brake sort of quite quite uh, intensely. Yeah. Isn't it supposed to uh, regen the batteries though if you use one pedal, or does it not do that if you're not if you're not using one pedal? Yeah, I mean it's hard to notice off the off the sort of range and the battery percentage if it is doing anything. It is supposed to regenerate your battery. That's what they say. But um, I mean the way I drive it, I'm not really too fussed about that. And would you say the car is more air into the side of like comfort or sport? Would you say like to style of driving? Uh, well, I guess it depends on the driver, doesn't it? Um, I, I would say it's more of a sporty kind of feel to the drive. Yeah. Um, but then you do have your, your, like, if you do put it in sort of whisper or active mode, then it is more of a court sort of comfort driving. And obviously, it depends on your scenario if you're in the city or you're in the countryside area like we are now. So it's quite, I mean, it is like a bit of like an SUV stand, so it's quite high off the ground. What would you say, like, the, the cornering is like, you know, like. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's really really good for sort of cornering and performance driving as well. Um, we are planning to take it on a track day one day, so we'll get we'll find out then. Yeah, I mean, can you feel like any body roll in it, or uh, like compared to like you know like your S4 for example, which was a bit a lot lower? Would you say like it's got more body roll than the S4? I'd say slightly a bit more, yeah. But um, you know, I've got I've got some performance tires on as well, so it is quite good for that. Uh, you do hear the road noise more you know being a quieter car so obviously you need to you, it is worth having more high-end tires for that kind of uh, thing isn't it yeah exactly but well, you know when you get a good straight like this you can put your foot down in there let it rip a bit okay and that's pretty much it and that wraps up the review of the mustang mac e so let us know what you think of the video and what you think of the car itself final thoughts from me is i think the car is really really good but the problem is, is as you saw from the video, the charging network in the UK is just absolutely pants. And you know, if you, especially if you live in up north or in more rural parts of the area, you're not in a city, you're gonna struggle finding a place where you can charge the thing. But the cars are definitely coming along and it's something to look forward to. So I uh, hope you liked this video. Please uh, drop us a like and subscribe in, and in the comments in the uh, description below. And catch you on the next one.